is going on YouTube. Welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Now, when I first started actively pursuing G1, I think about in 2012, I was really surprised about what put a character in demand, what really rose the cost of a particular figure. So I'm going to use a couple of examples here. I have Backstreet and Bludgeon. Now Backstreet, he's pretty cool. He's orange and gray, a much about lost bludgeon. Much taller than bludgeon. Get the little gun pointed straight again. And he's got a pretty cool gimmick. He's got these laser blasters on his shoulders that actually fold back and with the push of a button, spring forward. Pretty neat. Nice and chromed out. Now when you transform him into a vehicle, put those back, fold the arms down, fold this up, feet up, push him together. He's a cool looking race car. He's got sticker wheels because of the gimmick. He's got a little third wheel in the back to roll along. But his gimmick still works in car mode. Going down the track, sees a bad guy, boom. That is cool, that's a cool figure. And then you have Bludgeon. Little green guy with a purple gun, turns into a tank, no gimmick whatsoever. Take the gun off, take the backpack off, arm straight down, push the head in, flip the legs around, put the backpack back on, which is the turret, then attach the purple gun. And there is this little tank. Here you go. Little tank right here with no wheels. Nothing. He just scoots along the ground. Now, which of these would you think is the more sought-after figure? Well, of course you're going to say Bludgeon. That's the title of the review. But yes, Bludgeon. Now, is it because of the robot? No, 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 no. It's because of his other accessory. His pretender shell. Now, the pretender shell is nothing special. Looks like it could be a He-Man villain. It's a skeletal samurai, a samurai with no sword, mind you, we'll get into that later, with a gun. The only thing this can do is move up and down, or his arms move up and down, and that's it. The gimmick for the whole figure, of course, is you remove the helmet, split the body in half, and the bludgeon tank fits inside this and stores stores away. This is one of the pretenders. But this here, this figure, complete. Tank, little purple gun, turret, white gun, helmet, and skeletal figure. If you're lucky, $250. Complete. That's usually a high price on eBay. And why is that? He was never featured in the cartoon. Neither one was featured in the cartoon. Both were featured in the comics. But it was all about the writing. This guy, he was in like three issues, and he was just a he was just a soldier. He was just in being a just being a soldier. This guy, they applied an incredible story to him that we're gonna go over right now. So welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews, Transformers Generation 1, Bludgeon. I'll get you, he prime. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Now, Bludgeon first appeared in issue 60 of the original Marvel run. He was the leader of a uh, trio of Decepticon pretenders, including Octopunch and Stranglehold. Now, what was interesting is in the comics, he was drawn with a samurai sword. Octopunch was drawn with a trident and Stranglehold had a flail. 
all three of those characters didn't come with any of those weapons. They only came with a gun. So I found that kind of interesting that Marvel Comics, the writer at the time, decided that, hey, he looks like a samurai. Let's make him a samurai. We'll give him a sword. They also made him a master of a Cybertronian martial art called Met <laughs> Metal, Metal Keto. That's a mouthful. I actually practiced saying that all day and already blew it. But uh, so it made him a martial artist, very, very focused. I mean, very samurai based. So me being me and I like my action figures looking authentic and just like they did in the comics. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the live action movie came out the same time I got him. And uh, there we go, a little chrome, chrome paint. And I now have a comic worthy bludgeon. So anyway, back to the comics. He led uh, this team uh, for a couple couple issues, tracking down some Autobots. Uh, disappeared, actually, up until issue 77, 76, where he had all of a sudden assumed leadership of the Decepticons. He had completely taken over. Scorponok was killed during the Unicron, Unicron battles. Uh, Megatron was gone. Galvatron was gone. So he filled the opening. And he was brutal. He led an attack on a planet. He pretty much slaughtered the inhabitants. Any Autobot that would fall in his, <laughs> get in his way, he'd uh, kill them as well. And what was neat is throughout all these stories, you never saw him outside of this mode except in the very last issue, issue 80, which uh, he actually graced the cover of, which was the last issue of the G1 Marvel run, you see him in tank mode, transform to robot mode, and then enter the shell. Other than that, this is the only way this character was ever presented. So you had a transformer who was never a transformer. But it was the stories and the writing that really boosted his popularity. So let's take a closer look at Bludgeon. Now this won't take too awful long because I pretty much went over everything in the introduction. I did bring Backstreet back in uh, just to tell you something I forgot earlier. I told you how Bludgeon goes for about 250 give or take. Backstreet, maybe 15 So there's an easy one to get. On to Bludgeon. Now we'll go over the shell first since that's the most popular iteration of him. Now I do want to point out that my shell may look a little different than some other collectors is I bought the Repro Labels upgrade set for him to give him a couple little extra modifications like the Decepticon belt buckle here. On the back is another Decepticon symbol and some Cybertronian writing. I added from some spare stickers the kneecap guards and of course I the Leonardo sword from the Mutant Ninja Turtle movie a few years back with some chrome paint for some extra added flair. <clears throat> now of course if you're looking for the figure to buy on eBay or somewhere on the secondary market this is what you want to look for. It's the shell with the helmet and white gun. And don't forget, you're looking for both halves, the back and the front. So looking for those as far as the shells concerned. We'll set them to the back and move on to tank mode. Whoops. For a martial artist, he's not very steady on his feet. Tank mode, super simple. Uh, like I said before, it doesn't even have any wheels. You wouldn't want to play with it, which is something you want to look for too if you're hunting all these figures down. If it was played with by a kid, it might be war on the bottom. Mine is uh, immaculate. I'm quite proud of mine. But anyway, lots of pieces and parts. The tank comes apart like so. 
the turret and gun barrel separate just the tank easy transformation flip the back move the arms forward press up here to reveal the head once again the repro labels are going to show on this figure with Decepticon symbol some little grates and grills here and a face the original figure does not have a face he has a sticker face uh, kind of like his Marvel Comics appearance anyway I forgot to show you in tank mode the repro labels on him let's pretend the turrets on you've got a Decepticon symbol here some tank details for the focus and some taillights and gas cans on the back now that's a cheap repro label set it's only about five bucks now let's get him into full combined mode so you want to take the shell here and it's been a while so bear with me i, I don't display him this way oh, push the head down Trying to remember. Oh, he just pops in. He just falls in pretty easy. So, just the bottom of the tank goes inside the shell. The turret can hook to the arm, like so. And you can attach the gun as well. Helmet goes back on. Rifle back in hand. And there you go, there's the official version. Of course, like I said, I like to display mine with his sword. And there you have Generation 1 Bludgeon, 100% complete, all combined. And there you have Transformers Generation 1 Bludgeon. A character that is still very popular today. He hasn't had many decent Hasbro runs though. He had one in the Revenge of the Fallen line. It's actually a very cool figure as long as you get the third party upgrade set to give him the skeleton face and the awesome chrome swords. Now this year he has another figure coming out but it's going to be a little mini figure for the Power of the Primes line. Now, if you're a G1 collector, should you hunt down Bludgeon? Yes. Without a doubt, yes. But man, you better be ready to pay if you uh, are wanting to piece him together. The best uh, advice I have for you is you find one 100% complete. Because to be honest, this little purple gun that uh, I showed was the tank turret or the weapon to the figure, that there, that little tiny purple piece, is the most expensive piece that you're going to hunt down. But once you get him into your collection, you'll be proud to have him. You'll brag about him, and collectors who do not have him will be jealous of you. And I want to thank you for stopping by, visiting my channel, and listening to me ramble on about one of my another one of my favorite Marvel characters. And if you want to check me out, along with some of my other Transformer collector buddies, look up Transformers and Such on Facebook. Got a great group of people, and we discuss Transformers and Such. Guys, this has been Patriot Prime. Have a great day. Hoo-ah! Everybody was...